Hello everyone, welcome back to another Minecraft Crate Mod tutorial. This episode, I'm going to teach you how to generate power using Crate, and also how to adjust the speed of your contraptions to match the power requirement of your machine. And at the end of the video, I'll also show you how to make a hyper-efficient automatic furnace generator, uh, which will be timestamped below if you just want to see that. The first thing I'm going to go over is the engineer's goggles. So basically what this does is it actually shows you kind of more in depth what the output of a machine is. So if you look here, I have some windmills powering these speedometers, which basically gives you an output of the speed. Um, it does have the little dial on here, which will actually move more towards the purple as your machine's moving faster, but it won't actually give you an exact readout of how much power you're using. So if you can put these in your helmet armor slot, you're wearing them. And now if I hover over this gauge, it'll tell you the speed. Uh, another thing you can do is if you get this uh, stressometer, It'll also tell you the remaining capacity, so like how much power is left in your system. So first thing I'm going to go over is how to actually change the speed of a contraption. So the first option is using the cogwheels. So if you take a large cogwheel and place it kind of next to a small cogwheel like this, um, you can either double or half the speed. So if I go ahead and look at speedometer and I put it just right here, you can see that each of these um, little windmills are generating one RPM, one rotations per minute. So when I have a big cog after a small cog, what happens is I'm going to half my speed, but I'm also going to double my power. So if you have your machine set up, hooked up to your power, and it says it's overstressed, we can do is you can do something like this. It'll basically half the speed of your machine, but it'll double the power. So if you're just a little shy, you can just throw this together and you can keep your machine running. Now, if you have more than enough power being generated and you want to speed up your machine, you can use you can do a big cog going to a small cog and that'll double your speed, but half your power. So if you have plenty of power set up, I definitely recommend trying to max the speed out. Um, so you can see it goes from one RPM here to two RPM on the small cogwheel. Then a the way to place those, you can place them vertically or horizontally. You place one and then you go one block over here and you place it. You also will get these little arrows kind of poking out if you aim at the cog. If I click on those arrows, it'll actually place it kitty corner like that. And then same thing with a large cog going to the small cog. The other option you can do is you can use the rotational speed controller. So what this does is this is a little harder to craft because this actually does require mechanical crafting to get this integrated circuit. So it is kind of locked behind that wall, but once you have uh, mechanical crafting, I'd highly recommend using these rotational speed controllers because it gives you a really fine tuning control of how fast your machine is going. So on the side here, you'll actually see a little number that says speed RPM next to it. So you can see we got our windmill coming out with one RPM. And then this number says 16, it's 16 by default. We see that we're moving at 16 RPM. If I were to go ahead and just bump this up, I can go all the way up to 80. Then we're going at 80 RPM. You can actually max this, max this out at 256. And it'll be spinning at max speed. The other thing you can do, which is pretty cool with this is if you're, if you set it up to a speed, then your machine is running backwards for whatever reason. You can just scroll down to the negatives and it'll basically start moving the other direction. You can see right here, it's kind of moving around that way. Or I bump this up this way, it starts moving this way. That's how that works. I definitely recommend getting one of these as soon as you can to run your machines. So now we'll start talking about how to actually generate power using the crate mod. I'm also going to kind of follow the natural progression of a survival world and what items you'd craft after another. So the first thing you need, um, because everything else is kind of locked behind create power, is the water wheel. So water wheel is just a bunch of slabs, and then a cog wheel, which is a single andesite alloy, and then a bunch of wood. Andesite alloy is either iron or zinc and andesite. Uh, once you do have power set up, what I'd highly recommend is mixing it, because then it's one andesite and one nugget instead of two of each. So basically you're halving um, the requirement of material, but you are taking a little more time. So 
I'd highly recommend this, but it's kind of up to you if you want to do it. So once you have your water wheel, basically what you got to do is you just got to put it next to flowing water. Now the reason I have this little machine set up is that every flowing water on these four spots is going to generate power. What I mean by that is if I were to grab some glass and block this off, you can see that water is only flowing at this top slot, generating 128 SU at 8 RPM. If I get rid of it, generating 256 at 16 RPM. Now the reason the RPM and the speed is important is because if you're generating something with a lot of power, but it's going really slow, it's kind of generating less power if you want to speed it up. So what I've actually done for you guys is I've put together a document, which I'll be linking down in the description, that gives you a full breakdown of the power, speed, and then I've had made calculations to basically convert everything into the fastest speed. So if I go ahead and convert the water wheel into the fastest speed, one water block is basically generating four SU at 256 speed, two water blocks generates nine, and three water blocks generate 16. Now one super important note I'm gonna make about the water wheel is, you see these little fins sticking out? That's actually very important to how you set this up. Go ahead and flick this lever, you can see the water starts going the other way, it's going against the fins. Suddenly we're generating 10 RPM at 160 SU. So it actually severely lowers the capacity that we're generating with this water wheel. So definitely watch out for that. That's super important to make sure that you're not wasting any of your materials with these water wheels generating the wrong amount of power. So next we're gonna go over the fans. So fans are made with propeller, anisite casing, shaft, and some cog wheels. Now the propeller is what's kind of locking you from starting off with fans. You have to start with the water wheel because you got to make these plates, or sorry, the sheets, which you got to make with the mechanical press. So once you made those and you want to start putting them to use, basically what you got to do, the steps are grab some kind of heat source. So campfires, fire, um, lava, and mango blocks all work. And then you want to place the fan facing your heat source. Uh, if I want to place this against this face, if I hold shift and right click, basically place it upside down. And the last step is to grab some kind of power source, power it up, and you can see this little um, shaft will start spinning and that means we're actually producing power. Now fans actually produce very little power. Um, a water reel with a single block of water actually produces four times the amount as one fan because um, at max speed a fan is only going to produce one SU. So if you want to use fans for something I'd only recommend doing it if you need something to move really slow or if you're going to want to make a thousand fan array or something but honestly water wheels I'd probably recommend them because they're cheaper, they're easier to get and they produce more power. But fans are really nice for small farms where you want to keep it compact because this is definitely the smallest. I won't say that. It's 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 the second smallest way to generate power um, in the mod. So I'm going to talk to you guys about the windmill. And the windmill is probably what you're going to use for most of your game because it's dirt cheap to craft. You can actually craft it before crafting a water wheel, which I did not actually realize until this point. Um, so it just takes a turntable any stone block and a shaft. A turntable is just a slab and a shaft. So it's dirt cheap to make um, and you generate quite a lot of power with it. Um, so if you do one to 15 wool or sail blocks, you're actually generating double the speed of a fan array. So this is two blocks tall, this is also two blocks tall, and this is generating double the power. Now to actually make a windmill, basically you're gonna craft your windmill bearing and then you're gonna put either sails on it so let's go ahead and show you guys this. Um, you can do either vertical or horizontal. If I grab some sails, put my sails on here, then right click my bearing, it'll start producing power. Now another option you have with the windmill is you can grab a chassis, um, grab a radial chassis and a slime ball. Put the chassis there, put slime on all four sides, and then you can put wool on that and it'll also function as a windmill, generating power. Um, wool and the sails do the same amount of power. 
However, the sales are much cheaper. Uh, you get eight sales from each bull. So especially early game, I definitely recommend doing some sales. It'll save you on having to farm up a lot of sheep. Now, depending on how many sales or wool you have, you're gonna generate different amounts of po power, which I will put up on the screen now. So as you can see, with one to 15 sales, you're generating two, 16 to 23 sales, you're generating eight. And then after that, every eight sales or wool you add, you're gonna basically almost double your power, kind of maxing out at 128 sales or wool. And that's actually generating um, 512 power at max speed, which that's significant. And this will be able to power most things. Um, you might have to double up if you need a bit more, but honestly, this is probably your best um, shot for an early game farm. Now, the next thing I'm going to go over with you guys is the furnace generator. This is your late game power source. It's kind of the best power source in the game. Um, this largest sale only generates half of what a furnace generator does. So to actually make your furnace generator, you replace your furnace, right click on one of the faces with the furnace engine, then one block away, place your flywheel. Then once you see these little leads, you know that this is a completed contraption basically. And once I start powering this furnace, I'm gonna start powering my machine. So if I go and throw some coal in here and just start smelting up some stone, you can see that our flywheel is gonna to start to spin. We're generating 16, thousand SU at 16 RPM, which translates to 1,024 power at max speed, which is actually double than a windmill, max windmill at max speed. So something to note is that you can do these with smokers as well. If I go ahead and populate the smoker, um, it's gonna generate the same power as a furnace. So last part I'm gonna talk to you guys about the furnace engine is the blast furnace. The blast furnace is gonna be the biggest power generation unit in the game. A blast furnace is gonna generate four times the power of a smoker or a furnace generator. The blast furnace does is you need to smelt something in the blast furnace. So if I look at what I can smelt, basically all the ores, all the crushed stuff, um, a few other things you can smelt down, um, gold and iron gear, and yeah. Basically what it means is you can only smelt certain things in here to generate your power. Now there is no way to automatically do this in vanilla unless you had a skeleton or zombie farm feeding this gold and iron armor. However, if you're playing in a mod pack, what I definitely recommend is looking into what options you have in that pack. Um, if there's anything that you could smelt, craft back into its raw form and then put back into the furnace generator um, and just generate automatic power that way. So now we're gonna look at a few power farms. So first thing I'm gonna show you guys is what I would recommend as your first big power generator, unless you're able to farm enough sheep to get a windmill going. Um, basically all this is, is is just a row of water wheels and you can go out as long as you want and it all just comes to one end. And then just make sure that you have your water flowing this way so the way I have that is basically it's there's an air gap all the way around the water wheel, then a block here, and then I just placed water along this top edge. It'll kind of flow down, generating a whole bunch of power. Then next, I have a super compact fan generator. So basically all this is is it's the fans powered, mangle box under it, and then the best way to connect these up is actually with belts. Um, cause they're all going to turn the same way. So you can't use the gears. So all this is, is it's a bunch of shafts and you just grab a belt, place it from one end all the way to the other. And these will all move together. Um, now this whole system actually generates not a lot of power. So you can see this generating double the power at four times the speed. So, and that's only half the blocks. This is only 16 water wheels. Well, this is 32 bands. So water wheels are definitely going to be a really good source of early game power. And last but certainly not least is my hyper efficient furnace generator design. 
So if this is an automatic furnace generator, basically what it's doing is it's taking a little tree farm, harvesting the wood, eating it into this two furnace generators, and generating our generating power. So this is fully automatically generating 32,000 SU at 16 RPM. That'll run most things if you ever run out. This design is actually tileable. So you can take this whole design, put another one right next to it here, and it'll continue to work perfectly. Um, the only thing I'll note with that is once you do that, to connect it, basically you're gonna take this belt, go from here to here. Um, if you put another one, you'd go from here all the way to the next one. The way this works is we have a fully automatic tree farm using a windmill. So if you look down here, we're actually using a windmill bearing to run not only our tree farm, but all of our belts as well. So if these ever do run out of power, these are not dependent our tree farm is not dependent on our furnace engines. So this is actually working fully automatically with just a single wool. Um, Cause if we'd have to go all the way up to 16 um, wool, if you wanted to kind of double the speed, which this is going to be just fast enough. So we got our one wool kind of connected up here with these bearings, got a few deployers. Um, if you're interested in how to build a tree farm for yourself, I'll be linking a video up in the corner now, and there'll also be a link down in the description. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of taking the power out here as well, because this is generating power. I'm kind of feeding it into all of these belts. And what the belts do is this first one has a filter on it. Basically what this filter is doing is it's saying, birch logs are on my deny list. So it's gonna take anything that isn't a birch log, take it on this belt. The chute's gonna grab things from the belt and then drop it into the fire, automatically voiding it. You could put a chest there if you wanna collect your sticks and saplings. Um, however, I think voiding them is probably the better option because once that fills up, you're going to kind of clog up your system. Then over here, we got our filter with birch logs coming in through here into our chest. You can see that we're actually starting to get a little bit of extra logs here, which is good. Um, that means we're not going to run out. So basically, the chest is over two chutes, which go into our two furnaces, which are connected up to our furnace generator. And that's automatically basically making charcoal. And our charcoal is going to drop down in the chute onto this belt down here. Come up here around the corner. And it's going to go in through these two andesite funnels into our furnaces, kind of refueling furnaces themselves and keeping this a consistent system. And again, we're just kind of voiding any extra coal so that way we don't end up clogging our system or just having a lot of coal laying on the ground. And the way we're doing that is we have the funnels here, which are going to suck it up off of the belt if there's space in the furnace. If there isn't space in the furnace, it'll just kind of go right on by to the fire. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, you know what to do. Bye-bye.